So our next presentation is uh, charting a course for diversity and inclusion at the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing. And we are very privileged to have Dr. Piri Ackerman Barger to share with us. All right, thank you. Um, I would like to really thank um, the center for all the work and vision that it's had and uh, thank the teams that went uh, prior to this. All the projects that you had were incredible. Um, for the School of Nursing, I'd like to acknowledge our team. Um, we had a combination of faculty, staff, and we had a student that were involved in it. Um, I was gonna be presenting tonight with my colleague, um, Dr. Jenna Shaw Batista. Um, she's wearing her other hat right now. She is a midwife, and she is currently assisting one of our faculty colleagues who went into labor last night, and the baby does not seem to be in any hurry to come out, so she's with our colleague right now. Um, so I wanna talk with you a little bit about a process. You are not obligated to read that very texty <laughs> slide. But we put it up there to show you that there was a process that happened and there's a little bit of a story that goes along with it. Um, so the, the members of our team got together and we talked about what we should do as a school of nursing. What was the project that we were gonna do that was gonna represent the school of nursing? And um, one of the things we realized is that a lot of us on this community of practice team was also on the diversity and inclusion implementation team. So as we're having conversations, we're like, well, we're already doing that on the other team and um, some conversations like that. Um, and then we started realizing that there were some different sort of um, paradigms for approaching diversity and inclusion. And so one of the things I wanna talk about is that the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing is fairly new. So in terms of looking at trends with students, it gets a little bit tricky. How do we know if we're doing a good job if we can't look at scads of data about admissions and where students have gone and attrition and that sort of thing? Um, so that was one piece of it. Um, the other piece of it is um, I think that I tend to have a um, outcomes and process oriented approach. Um, the outcomes part, I think of our great John Lewis, civil rights activist and congressman who says, um, he said that patience is a disgusting word. We want our freedom and we want it now. And I love that term and it, it speaks to a lot of how I approach things from time to time. Like I want diversity and inclusion and I want it now. And I sometimes feel impatient by the process that needs to go through. Um, so there's that outcomes piece and really wanting the outcomes. There's also the process piece that if you're going to build something and you're going to build it well, there has to be this infrastructure. There has to be this buy-in from your school and your faculty and your students and your staff to make it worthwhile. So in trying to figure out what this project was gonna be, we realized that there was a more abstract project perhaps that came out of it, which was contributing to an overall strategic plan. Um, and so in that strategic plan, there are a couple of things that we realized that we wanted and needed to do. One was to have short-term goals. What can we do to have that impact right now? What is our um, sort of medium length goals and what are our long-term goals? Who do we wanna be in 10 to 20 years? Um, so some of the things that we began to look at was what do we know now about our diversity? And what we found out is that it's complicated. It's always complicated. We have some programs where we have some of the highest diversity rates in any of health profession schools in the state of California. We're doing really well with our MEPIN program. Of course, we don't have the data to say, well, we have diversity and our students are doing well. However, we just had our first graduating cohort of MEPIN students. They're passing their boards um, at, they're passing them well and landing jobs in the burn ICU at UC Davis and in the NICU, which are not hard or which are hard to get as new graduate nurses. Um, but not all of our cohorts are doing as well as we want them to do in terms of diversity. 
Um, we also know that UC Davis, with the School of Nursing as no exception, we do diversity well, but we don't always do inclusion well. And what that means is that students sometimes come into the health professions in general, UC Davis, also the School of Nursing, and expect a level of inclusion that they actually don't experience from their peers and from their faculty members. And we're realizing that this impacts students' ability to thrive. I mean, we don't want our students just to survive our programs. We want them to meet their full academic potential. And we know that there's more that we can do to help students get to that place. Um, so we know that we need to continue to look at what we're doing well, and we need to continue to look for areas of improvement. Um, so our priority recommendations from our COP ha were also um, expressed in our long-term um, diversity inclusion implementation committee, and this is what we came up with. Um, that we wanna be clear and consistent that diversity and inclusion are at the center of what, they, of what we do. It's not an add-on. It doesn't go at the bottom of the agenda. It's central to everything that we do. So leadership comes out of that. Teaching comes out of that, and our scholarship comes out of that. Um, we realize that there is, um, we need to be very inclusive with the way that we're approaching diversity. So again, faculty, staff, students need to be involved with that, but also the community, um, looking at funding opportunities and opportunities to bring in experts um, to tell us from their lens what the School of Nursing could be doing better. Um, the other thing that, that we do sometimes in the School of Nursing is a, a process that is not um, the norm. For example, a lot of schools start up with a pre-licensure nursing school and then they go up to having a PhD. We started our PhD first and then master's program and then we went to pre-licensure. So with our diversity statement, what we ended up doing is writing a very strong diversity statement around uh, admissions and then realize that we don't have a strong diversity statement for the overall school. So we're taking what we had for the admissions program and making that a more broad diversity statement for the School of Nursing and having that be uh, central to our strategic plan. Um, we're also looking at what are the best ways to have robust initial and ongoing assessments. How do we know that we're doing diversity inclusion the way that we want to and that is central to our um, diversity statement? So we've actually put a team together right now so that we can look at what are those metrics that we wanna um, assess. Um, we wanna continue to recruit um, faculty and students by fostering inclusivity and realizing that the best way to recruit is by having a reputation. That we know that when there are students that say, we came to the Betty Irene Moore School of Nursing and we felt included, our voices were heard and we were supported, that that's gonna be the best way to get more students in. We know that that's true for faculty as well. Um, the other things that we've been talking about are how do we integrate unconscious bias training? Um, how do we have an incident response? So when something happens, when there's a microaggression or when we have a faculty or leader who misspeaks in some way, is there a way to address that in the here and now before the gossip comes and sort of the drama comes around it, that there can be an official mechanism for addressing that right now and also potentially a restorative justice um, process. Um, so in our long-term recommendations, we wanted to have an infrastructure with well-defined processes. Um, we wanna have robust ongoing assessment data. Um, and we are still looking at what some of our short-term and long-term activities are, but what we know is that we wanna make those decisions as um, an entire group. Um, so going forward, we wanna make sure that all individuals in the School of Nursing are accountable for maintaining and fostering a culture of inclusion. And we know that in order to do that, we need to have as many voices on these teams as possible. So we've had a couple of iterations of our diversity inclusion teams that represent different pockets of folks from the School of Nursing. Um, again, the infrastructure, um, faculty and staff that reflect the diversity, this other term, we wanna look at student strengths and multiple intelligences. And the idea of multiple intelligences is, is that we know that 
we appreciate verbal skills, mathematical skills, and analytical skills. We see these on the GRE and the SAT, but we also know that there are other intelligences that students bring, interpersonal skills, the ability to self-reflect, um, the ability to um, see relationships and processes, and a lot of times our students from underrepresented backgrounds have this well-developed, it's been survival for them, to understand what these relationships are. So we wanna honor that and um, leverage that. Um, and again, looking at sustainable partnerships in the community that are, that are uh, mutually beneficial and collaborative. It's not us going and saying, we wanna do this with you, but more of a process of what can we do with you? What is it that you need and what are your strengths and what can we build upon, okay? So again, the um, areas, structure, metrics, training, and communication. Um, so where we are right now is that we're in the third iteration of our diversity and inclusion team. Um, and what we're looking at now is establishing the matrix and seeing what we wanna have as the um, major actions for the upcoming year. Um, and we're gonna finalize that diversity statement and a lot of the recommendations that the COP um, community did is being considered for the diversity statement. Um, and so in terms of those action plans, we are figuring out um, the best way to implement training. One of the examples is that we are putting together a um, unconscious bias training for our admissions committee members. Um, and then the other thing is um, looking at communication. How can we communi communicate what we're doing throughout the School of Nursing so that um, we have more of a centralized effort rather than um, all these different efforts that are happening separately and don't have cohesion. So thank you very much. Appreciate your time.